First off, I would like to give thanks to everybody that have been following this channel. And we've reached another milestone. We are now at 100,000 subscribers. I appreciate each and every one of you. Also, I posted a GIF in a community post several days ago, and some might have thought of that was somebody trying to break in our cars. Well, it was me trying to scrape ice off my windshield, and I was planning to drive off to get some dashcam footage, which we'll be checking out in this video. But unfortunately, roads were closed, and as you can see, I almost fell. Some might say I fell, but loose of balance would be a better description. We are not used to ice and snow here in South Texas. So let's get on with the video. Hello guys, Lifehackster here. Today we are going to check out a somewhat unique dash cam. And I got interested in it because it has pretty good reviews at Amazon. Nexar sent me this unit for me to review and thank you Nexar. The unique feature of this dashcam and differentiates it from other dashcams is that it also streams and records to your smartphone. So we will do the unboxing, check out its features, set it up, and do the installation. And we will check out its video quality and also see how its features work and see if this dashcam is a good choice for your car. Let's check out its features first. This dashcam pairs with your smartphone and you need to download the Nexar app. It records in 1080p resolution with a 135 degree field of view. So what it does when you have set it up on the app is that when you start your car, your phone will automatically connect to your dashcam's Wi-Fi and start recording to your phone. The app works in the background so you can use other apps. So it records straight to your phone and use up to your phone's memory that you set during setup. And it will loop record and replace the older footage with new ones once your set storage is full. No internet is needed or it doesn't use the data plan on your phone unless you trigger the G sensor because of a crash or hard braking. Then it will upload the clip automatically to the cloud. Now as to the cloud, the all driving events that they wrote here is kind of misleading. Because what is uploaded to the cloud automatically are only hard brakes and crashes footage. Which I guess are the events and hopefully no crashes. And you only use the cloud when you edit and save the footage that was recorded in your phone's memory which is only limited to a minute and a half per clip. The dashcam also has a battery on it that even when your car is off and parked, it will start recording when it senses movement and it will be testing this later on. Unlimited cloud backup, which Nexar automatically upload incidents and trim clips to the cloud for free. Accident reports, you can easily submit for insurance claims and Nexar creates a report that includes the footage and data like speed, location, and impact. And I'll be testing this later on, and no, I'm not going to crash my car just to test this. There is the Where I Park My Car feature, which for iOS users, you can just ask Siri, and Nexar will replay the last seconds of your last drive and with a map to help you remember where you parked. This is helpful especially if you park in a mall or the grocery store, which I tend to forget where I park a lot of times. And there is Emergency Contact Alerts, which is only for iOS users. Nexar will alert your emergency contacts when Nexar detects accidents. I'm not really sure about this one, but some people might want it. Anyways, time to open up the box. Also, there's not a lot of info on the box itself, and you don't see any features or specs of the dashcam. It just says Nexar. When you open the box, you will see the dashcam itself, and it is a small footprint dashcam. We have the camera lens at the front, 135 degrees field of view. On the side, we have a power button and the microSD card slot which comes with a 32GB card. On the back, there's no screen, just LED status lights when the camera is recording and the Wi-Fi connection. On top, we have a mini USB port for power and the notch for connecting it to the mount. On the bottom, there is a reset hole and we have some vent holes on the other side. What else is inside the box? We have some paperwork and we have some accessories box. We have the suction mount that has the GPS module integrated on it. We have the trim push tool. We have the USB power cable about 11.5 feet in length. A double USB car charger and some cable clips. Let's set this up first with the Nexar app before we install this. To install the dashcam to the GPS mount, just align the notch to the mount and slide it in until it locks in place. On top of the GPS module is a mini USB port to plug in for power and the mini USB plug from the GPS needs to be plugged into the dashcam. Download, sign up, and log into the Nexar app. 
You do have to agree for the app to use location all the time. Click Let's Start. Plug in the dashcam. Join the dashcam's Wi-Fi network. Update the firmware if needed. For the dashcam to begin recording automatically as soon as you start your car, set it up with Bluetooth. And that's it, you're set up and ready to go. Let's now check out the settings in the app. To get notification, make sure you enable it. In the more section of the app are the settings where you can toggle auto start and end drive to on, choose if you have an electric car, mute alerts, and you can set up Siri for iPhone users. In phone storage, you can choose how much percentage of your phone storage you will dedicate to the app to record your footage. So when you drive, the app in the background will automatically start recording to your phone and also to the micro SD card if you installed one. In your phone, the recordings will be saved until it meets the max storage limit that you choose. You can go as low as 20% of your available storage and as high as 70%. The app will loop record, meaning if it uses up all the allocated storage, it will start deleting old footage automatically and record new ones. You can click on external camera to see the settings of the dash cam itself, where you can toggle on or off the recording, camera sounds, and audio recording. And there is camera preview where you can see the live footage from the dash cam, which barely have any latency. Now you can set up groups where you can set up your family to get notifications when there is an emergency. Time to install this to my car. It has a suction cup mount so you just need to push it in your windshield and turn the GPS module clockwise to lock in the mount. Plug in the dash cam and you are ready to go. If you like this video and all my other videos, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really helps the channel. Also subscribe if you haven't done it yet and click the bell notification so as to get notified when I upload product reviews like this video, product updates, comparison videos, and long-term reviews. Thank you. Now let's do some testing. So this is the Nexor dash cam. I already installed it in my windshield and it is on when both the green and then the blue LED lights are turned on continuously. You know that it's streaming to your phone and recording also. So as you can see here on my phone, you will see that it is connected. So we can click on that and you will see. And that's what my uh, view right now. All right. And I'm in Ocean Drive. So you have the uh, GPS working and also it's recording. Now it's recording for 31 minutes. It shouldn't be 31 minutes. I think it is 31 minutes. I've been driving for a while then. All right, and here you can toggle the sound on. You can end the drive. Audio recording on or off. Normally, I will not use and turn on my phone like this. It will actually just be off and it should be recording as a backup. Now, the phone is only in 720p. It will record only in 720p resolution but the one and the micro SD card is the one in 1080p resolution so this is the uh, video and audio quality of the Nexer Beam uh, dash cam and uh, this right now I'm going to show you the footage from the micro SD card recording which is in 1080p resolution but the one that is recording to your phone is only in 720p so just keep that in mind now Nexar didn't really say that on their advertising that the app itself is recording in 720p instead of the advertised 1080p so now we will be comparing the 1080p which is the higher resolution to my VOPO 4k which is also recording right now and see what the difference that you can see I know uh, the vehicles uh, in front of me are stopped right now, so you pro uh, definitely you'll be able to see the license plates. So that's how it looks like with the 1080p with the Nexar. And with my 4K VOFO. All right, so we are, this is going to be the uh, video quality at night. The Nexar Beam, okay. With the Nexar Beam dash cam. And it is cold outside and we have the heater on, so we have a little bit cloudy windshield. So 
so we'll see what the footage looks like here in a bit but this is what uh, the video quality looks like and as I've said earlier the recording in the micro SD card is in 1080p resolution but the one is, that is recording on your phone is only in 720p so if you want to get the higher quality footage you have to remove the micro SD card and uh, download it or upload it or I guess transfer it to your computer so let's see it should be able to read license plates I don't think there's a lot of a glare but we'll be checking it out later and you're probably seeing it right now let's see if it's uh, recording or if it's uh, you can read the license plates on the van so now we are going to test the hard brake test and see if the Nexar dash cam would notify us or also it will record that event so I have my phone right here and the dash cam is al already recording so I'm gonna start I also have my son uh, added as a group so it should he should also get the notification so I'm just gonna start right here and I'm I, this is a closed course so nobody's here and I'm just gonna step on the brake as you can see new incident captured hard brake so this is it 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 automatically uploaded to the cloud what happens this is uh, the recording will be 20 seconds before the test see that the, my car just started and that 20 seconds after you will get 40 seconds worth of uh, footage and uh, 20 seconds before the event and 20 seconds after right there okay one cool thing about this dash cam is that I can do this hey Siri uh-huh where did I park okay viewing you've parked at 5313 Saratoga Boulevard Corpus Christi and it will play the, the, the last footage of the dash cam and you can click on this and it will go to the maps It did start recording. I see it. But it will record after the event, not before or during. So the parking mode is kind of hit or miss, notification wise. So now I didn't get a notification, but it's right here. You will see it on the clips. And definitely after the event. So when you get a detected event, like in a crash, parking event, or hard braking, you can easily view it in the app. And it will also be automatically uploaded to the cloud. For events that we recorded while the camera is already recording, like crash and hard braking, the footage that is saved will start from 20 seconds before the event and 20 seconds after. Now for parking events, which the dash cam is basically off and not recording, and just the sensor is in standby mode, it will only start to record a few seconds after the sensor is triggered and the recording length varies. In my testing, I will get 6 to 8 second clips or sometimes 30 seconds. But the recordings and notifications are not reliable. Most of the time, I will not get notifications when supposedly the next time you turn on your car and when the app connects to the dash cam, you will get notified of parking events that happened prior. As to any incidents that were recorded, the app can easily make and forward a report to your insurance company which will send them an email with a link to your recorded footage, speed of your car, and the force of impact. If you have set up groups and added family members, they will also get notified when there is an incident. But they do need to also download and sign up on the app, which I wish they don't have to, and it would have been better just to send the notification via text message. Overall, I've used this dash cam for around 3 weeks and as to reliability of the app in recording to both the micro SD card and connecting to my phone to record, it is pretty reliable. I can't say the same for the parking mode though and it seems like the built-in battery will only last for a day. Then it needs to have power or for your car to start for the battery to recharge. Now personally though, the main issue I have and some of you might not agree with me is the whole recording to your phone feature. You already have a dash cam that records to a micro SD card and the whole phone recording and allotting your phone's memory plus using up battery of your phone while the app is running in the background. 
I'm not really sure if I'm willing to go to that hassle and trade that just to have a backup recording on your phone. Now I also say the phone's recording is the backup because it is only in 720p resolution. And the main footage is in the microSD card which is in 1080p. So those driving events that are uploaded to the cloud, you are more than likely to still retrieve the original footage from the microSD card and the dash cam to have a better quality footage. With dash cams, for me video quality is the main feature that I look for. 2K minimum and 4K is better. 1080p really has no place for dash cams anymore, especially with evolving technology. What are your thoughts on this? Any questions? Comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.